Welcome back to the Vanessa G Fit Cast. I'm Vanessa Gillette Pozos, and here with me we have a special in person guest, Miss Alex Long, head coach and dietitian at VGFN. Alex, welcome to the podcast studio. Hello, hello. It is so good to be back. <laughs> so today we are going to talk about hormonal birth control. Um, this was something that we we had been talking about for a while that we on this because neither of us actually are on hormonal birth control at this time. You know, I came off of birth control about three years ago, I believe, um, maybe even a little bit more. And then you came off birth control just recently. Yeah, literally about two months ago, like to this day. Yeah. So it's something that, you know, we've helped a lot of our clients at VGFN come off of birth control um, for various reasons. And that's what we want to talk about today. You know, we're not anti birth control. We're not pro birth control. We are very, very neutral and we're very much always wanting to help our clients unique individual situations, do what is best for them and help support them and their bodies in whatever situation that they are in and what they need. So that being said, a lot of women we find are just lacking education around how birth control actually works in the body. Um, what are some just potential side effects or risks that maybe you need to be aware of if you do choose to be on birth control for an extended period of time and just you know, all, all about the things related to hormonal birth control. So that's why, you know, since we have Alex here in person today, that was a great time to pick her brain and really knowledge dump. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to talk about this today just because I was actually just doing a client check-in recently and she's, she was at least a night shift nurse. So dealing with a lot of chronic stress, you know, poor circadian rhythm, sleep disturbances. And since then, she's actually switched to just working day shift. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's so much better for her body. And we finally did a Dutch test just to check her cortisol. And she is actually on hormonal birth control. And I also just wanted to clarify today, we are going to be talking about about hormonal forms of birth control. Obviously, there are you know the copper IUD, condoms, non-hormonal forms of birth control. And specifically, I want to talk about the pill and like you said, the hormonal IUD, just because those are the most commonly prescribed forms of birth control and the things that we see our clients are struggling the most with. But anyway, um, this client, she finally got her Dutch test and we were really focused on her adrenal health, but I had told her um, it really doesn't matter when you take the Dutch test because normally we do want to take it five to seven days after ovulation. But I told her, I'm like, you're not ovulating. You're on the birth control pill. Your estrogen and progesterone are going to show up low. And she was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> What's happening? I'm not ovulating. Like, how does this work? Like, I'm still getting a period every month. So I realized she's been on birth control since maybe like age 15, 16, and she's almost 30. You know, so many women just don't understand how this medication is affecting their body, what they're actually putting in their body. And this is the kind of education that I wish I had at my doctor's office when I was 14, you know, asking to be put on birth control. So yeah, super excited to dive into this today with you. Yeah. Well, let's, let's chat about it. So we're going to primarily talk about the birth control pill as well as some forms of hormonal IUDs. So let's um, drop some stats on us, Alex. Tell us the stats on birth control. Yeah, so kind of crazy. The FDA approved the first oral contraceptive pill in 1960. So and it's very new. Yeah, relatively. honestly, relatively new. But at the same time, when you think about the technology that was developed in 1960 compared to 2023, and it hasn't really been updated <laughs> since then, I'm like, oh, we might need to check that. We've had like 15 <laughs> iPhones and right. we still have like version one. 1.2 of birth the birth control. control. I know it's crazy. Um, and what's even crazier is that over 300 million women and counting to this day have used the pill specifically as an effective means of preventing pregnancy. I mean, hey, it works. You Absolutely. can't deny that, you know? Um, and it is still the pill specifically is the most commonly prescribed birth control method to date. And I wanted to talk about how hormonal birth control, specifically the pill, actually works in your body, if that's okay. And we're going to get a little bit sciencey, so <laughs> forgive me, but you know I love this stuff. And I just want to make it clear that most, hormo hom ah, wow. most hormonal <laughs> birth control pills contain synthetic estrogen and a synthetic progesterone replacement. So these synthetic hormones are not the same on a molecular level as your endogenous or your natural production of estrogen and progesterone. A lot of people think they are 
the same, but they're not. And they metabolize in the body very, very differently. And they're actually specifically formulated to thicken your cervical mucus, which is inhabitable to sperm. And the high levels of these synthetic hormones when ingested orally are not only designed to prevent you from ovulating, but they also cause systemic side effects throughout the body on all of our organ systems, which I know we're going to talk about today too. So it's so interesting because naturally a a woman is supposed to fluctuate throughout the month. Your hormones are supposed to fluctuate throughout the month. And I want to give you guys a little crash course on the female menstrual cycle, right? So typically after menstruation, you have a very slow and steady rise in estrogen. And eventually this is your follicular phase. Eventually about halfway through your cycle, your estrogen is going to peak and that releases a hormone called LH from the brain that LH is gonna stimulate ovulation from your ovaries. And after ovulation occurs, progesterone starts to spike in the luteal phase, right? There's also a slight rise in estrogen in the luteal phase, but progesterone is only produced after ovulation and that's gonna be the star of the show. Then eventually, as you get close to menstruation again, your progesterone and your estrogen are gonna both tank a second time. And that's what initiates this bleed. And now estrogen is responsible for thickening that uterine lining and then kind of, you know, progesterone comes in and says, let's maintain this uterine lining in case fertilization occurs, right? So you're building up this uterine lining, you're trying to maintain it in case you get pregnant, then you don't get pregnant, hormones crash, you shed that uterine lining. Now with hormonal birth control, since it contains the same amount of estrogen, high amounts of synthetic estrogen and a very low amount of synthetic progesterone, it basically prevents those hormones from fluctuating at all, right? And since you're taking synthetic hormones, that's going to shut off your own natural production of estrogen and progesterone, right? And you're kind of just maintaining this constant level of high estrogen, this constant buildup of a uterine lining that doesn't go anywhere until you take those placebo pills or the sugar pills in the last week of, excuse me, your birth control pack. Um, And so a lot of women think that birth control regulates their period, right? Because they're like, oh, I'm bleeding every month. I'm still getting a period like right on the dot. Mm-hmm. I know when I was on hormonal birth control, literally like clockwork, every single Wednesday morning of that placebo week, I could count on a bleed, but it's not a real period. It's just your body crashing from, you know, having this high level of synthetic estrogen. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you're not producing your own hormones. You're taking sugar pills. So your hormone levels absolutely crash and you have to shed that uterine lining that you were just maintaining. Yeah. And I really want us to emphasize that point there of when you are on the pill or when you are on hormonal birth control and you are having a bleed, you are not actually having a period. You are having a bleed. And while, you know, of course, we're obviously going to like normal human beings, we we're still going to refer to that as a period. It's important for you to understand your body and understand the difference because there is a benefit to having these actual cycles within our body. There's a reason that our bodies exist the way they do. And there's so many other chain reactions and benefits of having a natural menstrual cycle. And and, I mean, that's what we're going to get into here in a little bit, but let's, um, let's talk a little bit about the IUD. Now, how does that work differently compared to the pill? Yeah, great question. So obviously the IUD is not an oral contraceptive. It's inserted into your uterus, right? And it just kind of stays there. And a lot of doctors think that the hormones released by an IUD stay local in your uterus, but that just doesn't make any sense. Your organs are not cement chambers. They have permeable membranes, right? And I actually did a lot of research on IUDs um, just a few months ago. And Research does show that within a couple hours of insertion, those hormones are going to make it to your bloodstream, right? So you are still going to have some systemic effects. And now it's interesting, the hormonal IUDs actually don't contain synthetic estrogen. Most of them just contain a synthetic progesterone. And that, that constant stream of synthetic progesterone is actually going to thin your uterine lining. And that's why a lot of women on IUDs don't actually get a bleed most of the time. And, you know, you might think that that's a good thing. Like, oh, oh I, I, don't, <laughs> I remember when I, I, I was an IUD girl, you were a pill girl. And I remember when I first got the IUD, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I don't have to deal with the bleed anymore. And so terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Big red flag. Your period is a vital sign. It really is. Um, so anyway, 
progesterone, the synthetic progesterone thins your uterine lining. You don't get a period and it's also going to suppress your body's ability to ovulate, right? So um, the pill, you typically see more systemic effects um, because you're literally shutting off that communication line between your brain and your ovaries. Um, But over time, the IUD actually does the same thing. So at the end of the day, the IUD does ultimately the same thing like long-term as the pill. Like we're still creating the same result, even though the methodologies are different and the side effects are going to be a little bit different in terms of like you were saying on an IUD, typically you're going to lose your bleed. Not everybody does, but I know I did. And I know a lot of like my friends who also had IUDs did. And I just remember there was education was lacking so much to where I remember like the friends group I was in at the time when all of us seemed to get IUDs at the same time, we all were like, this is awesome. We don't have periods anymore. <laughs> like, this is so great. I don't have to worry about like keeping tampons on me all the time. And it was just like, we were so young and naive, but the reality is we did not receive any education from our doctors on the importance of actually having a bleed and why that is important for your body. Can you, I mean, speak to that a little bit of like, why, why should we be aware of, you mentioned before, like your bleed is like a a vital sign in the body. Why is it important? Yeah. Well, especially when we think about the birth control pill, right? I had mentioned it shuts off your natural endogenous production of estrogen and progesterone. And you're just taking these synthetic hormones that don't really do much for the body. But if you think about the benefits of estrogen, right? Estrogen is actually what's going to help keep your skin clear. It's important for bone density. Bone density. It's actually protective against breast cancer. And then progesterone, oh my gosh, if there is one hormone that more women need, it's progesterone. I see a lot of people with low progesterone in their luteal phase, or I see people not ovulating at all. And again, progesterone is only produced if you are in fact ovulating. Um, and progesterone is super important for just like your overall energy, well-being, mental health, sleep. So like not having these hormones circulating in your body is so bad for your long-term health. And just a lot of women don't realize that your period itself, menstruation, the bleed, yes, you know, the flow, the how many days are you bleeding, right? The amount of blood that you're you're giving, the color of the blood, that is telling us something about your body for sure. But the main star of the show of the menstrual cycle is actually ovulation, right? I mean, whether or not you are planning to have kids, females were made to ovulate. Like that is such an important part of just our natural physiology. And when we shut that off, like I said, you are literally shutting off a communication line between your brain and a vital organ, right? That can't be good. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And so again, you know, we're not here to like, it put fear into people of like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. We just want to provide education so that you can make the best decision for you and your body. But let's, let's talk about like, why is it that women take typically are going to be taking hormonal birth control? Obviously there is like the contraceptive part of this, but like, what did the the statistics say about why women actually are on the pill or are, you know, having an IUD put inside them? Yeah. Great question. And I just want to say too, for the longest time, even as I was going about my college degrees, studying nutrition, I didn't know all of this stuff about the pill. I didn't know the side effects. I didn't know what it was actually doing to my body. When I was 14, I was prescribed to birth control and it was just for symptoms. So if we're looking at studies, the research right now, um, 31% of women actually get prescribed birth control or want to go on birth control just because of their menstrual cramps. Mm. Their cycles are so painful um, or their cycles are irregular. That's 28% of women, irregular periods. Oh, here, take the pill. It's going to fix it, quote unquote. Um, 14% of women have really severe acne and the pill will absolutely (laughs) clear up your skin. Um, I was that woman who had really, really heavy, really painful periods. Again, I guess I wasn't a woman at this time. I mean, yeah, you were practically a girl. (laughs) Yeah, I was only 14, really. Um, and I also had really, really bad acne as a teenager and I didn't know what else to do. And so my mom was like, let's take you to the gynecologist. Let's get you on birth control because it'll fix it. And it absolutely did. And even as I did start learning about, you know, the side effects of birth control and what it was really doing, I was so afraid of getting pregnant. I'll be honest with you, you know, so I didn't want to come off of birth control because again, it's very effective at (laughs) preventing pregnancy. Um, But other than that, I mean, 4% of women do recommend birth control or doctors do recommend birth control to women with endometriosis. Um, And then the other 11% is just going to be like unspecified PMS. So mood swings, irritability, um, all that kind of stuff. So it's important to remember that most of these reasons, other than, you know, contraception itself, 
for women going on birth control, any type of hormonal birth control, it's just to mask symptoms, right? Menstrual cramps, irregular periods, acne, those are just symptoms of an underlying hormonal imbalance, right? But doctors don't ask these women why they're having the symptoms in the first place. So the pill isn't actually going to fix the underlying problem. It's literally just going to keep your hormones at a steady level and give you a withdrawal bleed that you think is your period every month. So you think that suddenly you're regular again and you're actually not. It's literally just a band-aid for the underlying root cause. And that's what's so frustrating. Even yeah. doctors to this day, you know, I remember my doctor telling me, oh, this will fix your period. No, it didn't. It just gave me a fake one, yeah. you know? It, like you said, it is just a band-aid on the problem. It's not actually fixing the root issue of what is going on and why you're having these symptoms. And obviously we don't want you to be dealing with cramps or like painful periods or all these just really uncomfortable things, but there's another way to actually fix those things without just slapping a bandaid on it and then potentially creating other problems because that's ultimately what is happening here. Like I like to think of it as like so many of us know, you know, maybe an older person in our lives who they travel around with like 15 different medications and pill bottles and they have to like stay on a specific schedule. And if you ever ask them, like, how did you end up with that many medications and pill bottles? It's typically because it started with, oh, well, first I got prescribed this to fix X problem. Then that pill created these other issues. Now I had, you know, this other uh, issue because it was a side effect of that one. So they gave me another pill to help with that. And then I developed another issue. So then they gave me another pill to help with that. And now I'm on 15 different pills and they're really all just like helping the side effects of different pills that you're on. Yeah. That's really what is happening. We just don't trace these things back effectively enough to understand, oh, now we're on an antidepressant because maybe it started with the fact that you were put on birth control at yeah. 14 and you've been on it for 15 years, or maybe you're dealing with some severe digestive issues. Maybe that traces back to your uh, being on hormonal birth control for years too. We just, as a culture, we haven't done a great job of really providing the education so that women can again decide, do you want to be the one taking you know, 15 different medications, or do you want to just fix the root cause issue? You have a choice. Ultimately, yeah. that is what you have. And you need the education to be able to make that choice. Absolutely. I mean, this is stuff that we do every day. This is something I'm really, really passionate about again, because I wish I had this education when I was younger. And even though we work with women in their twenties and even thirties coming off of hormonal birth control, I still love empowering these women with the education that they deserved when they were 14. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about like, what are the actual side effects that come with taking hormonal birth control? Yeah. Great question. So I know you hit on a big one, depression, anxiety, just it, intense mood swings in general, often leading to women to pursue that clinical diagnosis of depression, anxiety, and often going on medication for those conditions. Absolutely. It really, really affects your mental health. And I won't spoil this too much because we are going to record a podcast episode of, uh, right after this about our journeys coming off of birth control. But I can say from personal experience, I really struggled with depression, anxiety for a majority of my life. And I was also on birth control for a majority of my life. And just two months ago, since coming off the pill, I feel like a dark cloud has lifted. Like my fog has lifted. Brain fog is another really big symptoms of, of birth control. And I feel so much better, which is really, really cool. And um, the pill is also going to shut down your sex drive completely. Again, speaking from personal experience and from evidence-based research, you'll have a really low libido, uh, vaginal dryness, pain during sex is pretty common as well. Um, the pill also depletes micronutrients like B vitamins, vitamin C, zinc, magnesium. And then a lot of women will develop symptoms of those micronutrient deficiencies, which is really unfortunate. And you hit on another big one, digestive issues, mm -hmm. right? Um, the pill is absolutely known to really imbalance your gut microbiome, really interfere with the gut lining integrity, like your cell wall integrity in your gut. And that's just going to lead to a whole host of issues. And one of the big ones for me personally was chronic yeast infections, right? Because if you, if you have an imbalance of, of good bacteria in the gut, you're going to be more susceptible to gut-related infections like yeast infections. And then it was just this constant cycle of 
of me taking birth control and then every month I'd get prescribed diflucan and that's an antifungal and it was just it was just awful because that pill has its own you know side effects that we had talked about right um so those are the big ones but I also want you guys to know that the pill can also dysregulate other systems in the body other organs right especially the oral birth control pill I'd mentioned those effects are systemic right so that's also going to cause some dysregulation in your adrenal glands in your thyroid glands um it can trigger autoimmune diseases if you're genetically predisposed and then of course now we're treating you as a whole person but we're treating a bunch of different issues at the same time low thyroid adrenal fatigue and coming off birth control it's a monster yeah and it's like these things of course like we can work on these things while you're on birth control and we do we help a lot of our clients that's true improve a lot of these things while still on birth control if that's their choice that's what they want to continue with we support that and we help them through that and there are ways to do so but it's just like with anything that you need to understand how things are working within your body and be able to make the best choices for you I think I've said that like five times on this podcast because I really want to emphasize that this podcast is meant to empower you with choice with education because education gives you freedom and so you know, obviously there's a lot of things that could go wrong. And you and I have, you know, we were essentially almost like victims of a lot of these side effects, which is what ultimately led to our decisions to get off. And we're going to talk about that in the next podcast. But before we wrap this up, is there anything else we want our clients or our listeners to take away from this episode and to be able to understand about hormonal birth control? No, I don't think so. I, I mean, I really think that you hit on everything. And I, I really just want to emphasize that I, I don't want all of this stuff to scare you because I know that there are also some side effects of coming off of birth control the wrong way, right? Mm-hmm. Which is actually something that I did when I was younger, which I'm really excited to talk about. And, you know, it can just be a scary thought, especially for someone like me who didn't want children, like definitely not ready for children. I know the thought of coming off of birth control, if that's something that you want to do, can be really scary. And I also want to say that we have a lot of women that we work with who are still on birth control and can still get results. They can still see changes in their body composition. Again, I did. I didn't, I wasn't one of those women who had the weight gain or the inability to lose weight that I do see in some women who are on birth control. I was able to lose body fat on birth control for years, like before my wedding. I know I did a fat loss phase um, prior summers ago and like never had an issue with my body composition. If that's something that you're worried about, can I don't want to scare you. Um, it's just, it, it can catch up to you over time. The longer that you're on it, the more likely you are going to be to have some side effects. So that's why at least we want to talk about this now. And especially because I know we were just chatting off air. Most women think that the time to come off of birth control, whatever type of birth control you're on is when they want to get pregnant. Right. And then they end up actually struggling with fertility because for years, this hormonal contraception is shutting off your ability to ovulate. So it can take years even, uh, hopefully not that long, but it can take a long time for the system between your, your brain and your ovaries to actually come back online and for you to actually ovulate again. So again, if you are maybe a woman who is thinking about having kids in the next couple of years, I would really, really consider your options. Consider your options. Consider coming off of birth control now and really working to balance your hormones, heal your hormones, get your natural cycle back now so that you don't have to worry later when you actually do want to start a family. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, again, I want to emphasize that like birth control really only was rolled out in the 60s. Yeah. This is still very relatively new and it still is essentially like a long-term experiment on women. Yeah. And we're still learning more and more and more as time goes on of like what these side effects are, what the potential harms are. And so it's just truly understand how it works in your body so that you can do the right things to help your body with having essentially a foreign substance. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Be sure to join us on next week's episode where Alex and I are going to dive into our stories, why we came off of birth control, what was happening for us specifically in terms of side effects and what our experience was like coming off birth control and some recommendations for you on how to go about that process. Because what is not the right thing to do is just to listen to a podcast like this, decide that you want to get off birth control and just cold turkey, you know, get your IUD out or stop taking your pill. Don't do it. Please do not do that. You will have more issues than you know what to do with at that point. So Stay tuned for next week's episode and thank you so much for listening.